Shalom, shalom, man. I'm out here getting this slab squared away, man. Getting ready to do the um the walls. But the first thing is I have to take all this pressure treated lumber, especially for the base, man, where I have these uh anchors in the concrete and um have to lay everything out to make sure the measurements are right. Uh drill all my holes and then from there I'm gonna treat it with some uh some roof coating, like some rubberized uh latex waterproof roof coating so right now i'm just laying out all the end pieces and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take uh take my measurements from and make sure all the, the the pieces are correct and then based upon here i can set it uh i can set it how i want to build the um build the spacing for the wall so if i go 16 inches on center all the way down for eight feet and then 16 feet over here I'm just mapping everything out right now. This is just the prep work to make sure uh, everything is good because you don't want to be struggling trying to lift up a wall and you don't even have these uh, these points in there yet. So it's easier to do it this way for me. And like I said, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna treat this piece of wood with some, uh, I got some roof coating, I'll show you that. And uh, that way it doesn't uh, slowly deteriorate, even whether, well, you know, uh, pressure treated lumber will deteriorate over time. It just deteriorates slower. So by putting that um, rubberized coating on the bottom, especially where water and moisture and humidity will be, uh, it's gonna help out a lot. So let me get back to working, man. And I'll, when I get everything all uh, cut out, we'll go from there. Stay tuned. All right, we back at it. So I'm gonna show you, you know, when you are building, everything is not perfect. You know what I'm saying? When you are learning, there's a lot of stuff you're going to have to do uh, in order to, uh, you know, enhance your knowledge level. So you see right here, I got these anchors and they are, uh, they're not, not sticking out far enough. So something that I can do in the future is uh, if I know that a, a piece of two by four, uh, when we look at the side width is about an inch and a half, what I can do is mark off about two and a quarter inches from the top of the uh, the anchor that goes into the cement to make sure I don't uh, I don't bury it too deep. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take a wider uh, a wider bit and pretty much try to go down around the edge of the wood and uh, get this thing to where the washer will actually seat in the wood and then I can put the uh, the bolt over it. And I'm gonna have to do this. Uh, for pretty much all three of these because you know, it was just an error in my knowledge of making sure um, Making sure that the uh, The depth was correct the setting depth on these anchors was correct So just showing you all the the winds all the failures you see over there, man. Those ones are good. They're sticking up But over here. Yeah, man, we definitely um the learning curve has to be had So we're getting it getting it done man out here building this um this greenhouse making it happen all right, so I'm gonna take a minute and show you what I'm talking about as far as the depth of these anchors right here. So what I have right here is I got some of these long ones and the long ones, uh, especially on the end where the concrete is about five inches thick down there, five to six inches thick. And on this end, it's more about uh, four and some change. You know, these, I don't have any problems with them not sticking up far enough. So you can see right there, that comes up well below it. And on the other end where the concrete is thicker, that works perfect but on these ones if you put them dead towards the bottom see how much you just have barely a, enough lip so what i'm going to do next time is i'm going to mark them how far i want i know the piece of uh two by four is about an inch and a half good so i want to set them uh about right there and i can draw like a red line or with a sharpie letting me know right th right there is the deepest where i want to actually uh, set it and long as I can see the black line. I know I'll be good So I don't run into situations like that, but just having to work around it as you do on projects uh, You know stay encouraged All right, we're back man got the whole thing pretty much framed out For uh, where the bottom plates are gonna be and then we'll build the walls off of this next part man is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna paint these boards and uh, get them coated that way they got a good coating and I can get the longest life out of them because uh, with them being on the bottom and they're gonna get a lot of uh, a lot of exposure to water I want to make sure that I take the time 
and build this thing out right now before I have any issues with it. Uh, because once the structure is up, I don't want to come back and have to repair uh, bottom plates or anything like that. So I'll show you what I got. Stay tuned. All right, getting ready to do these um, these bottom plates. And this is what I'm using. I got this from the roofing section. Uh, this is a 243 Advanced uh, Elasto Merrick White Roof Coating. The reason I'm going with this is this one is siliconized. It's waterproof. So people use it on top of the roof. You got small leaks and things like that. It'll help seal up those small things. But most importantly, if you were to use a, uh, say for instance, like a bathroom or, you know, shower waterproofing membrane, that stuff is expensive as all get out. And it was costing, I want to say like 70 bucks for about a gallon. And I was like, nah, we ain't doing that. So what I did was I went with this advanced uh, elastomeric white roof coating, and this is white. And uh, this one ran me about 27 bucks. So I can get a lot further uh, with this right here and it'll help protect the wood in the same way as if I were using that bathroom waterproofing membrane, except this one is designed for roofing. So it can withstand uh, a lot of heat and stuff like that because the roof gets exposed to a lot of sun. So I'm about to crack this open and get to it. All right, so as you can see, man, got the, um, the, bottom, the bottom and majority of the sides done. And I'm gonna let this sit out and dry for about an hour. Uh, got it done, like I said, with that white. And it's like a latex, like a thicker version of latex paint. And uh, just put it on with a regular brush. Got the, uh, got the side exterior bottom plates done. And uh, once after about an hour, I'm gonna flip these boards over and I'm gonna do the top portions. Uh, once I do the top portions, man, we'll be ready to start uh, you know, cutting lumber and building these um these walls. That's gonna be the uh that's gonna be the easiest part. And uh from there, man, we will uh we'll build the walls up, build the rafters, and then start putting the siding on and then use some uh some spray foam uh to insulate it and we'll be good to go, man. So uh it's coming together. It just takes time, you know, you don't want to rush the process. Uh, compared to the other greenhouse, I'm taking a lot of time uh, making sure the cuts are right, you know, uh, because the last time the building was nowhere near square, nowhere near square, nor was it uh, uh, near level. I pretty much took the, built the frame with um, 12 by, you know, 12 by 12 uh, inch boards um, and just laid it based upon the contour of the ground. So it was definitely lopsided in this one. It's got a little bit of slope to help the water run off. You know, I got some grooves in there, some joints. You can see how rough they look compared to, we were doing this at night, but um, it will suffice. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this down and then I'll probably cut some boards. Uh, do, I might do 16 or I might do uh, about 24 inches on center. I just gotta see uh, what I wanna go with and I wanna make sure that I'm uh, spacing the, the studs uh, at the proper width to be able to match up the siding. When I put the siding on, my siding is 26 inches. So I wanna leave just a little bit of room for a little bit of overlap. So I might do 24 inches uh, on center to be safe and then go from there and then brace it all together and we'll continue. So this is, um, this is doggone, you know, uh, what you would say, part two, part two, part three. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll title this thing and see what I got far as the uh, the build up to this point and go from there. But just wanted to motivate you, man, show you that you can do it yourself. Stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. There's a lot of wisdom uh, in doing this stuff yourself versus uh, letting somebody else uh, come and do it, uh, build it together. It's prefabricated. You really don't learn how, how stuff works. You really don't learn how to use, uh, you know, tools like your, your, your circular saw. You really don't uh, learn and develop real skills. You only develop real skills by getting the reps in and actually doing it. So there you have it, man. Stay encouraged.